So another key element of our examination is to assess the back of our cat's eyes and this is important, it gives us an idea as to whether or not our cat is suffering from systemic hypertension. Between 20 and 30% of cats with CKD are suffering from systemic hypertension and many of them will have abnormalities evident on a fundus examination in spite of the fact that lots of them will still be seeing normally, will have normal pupil size and possibly no external clues of systemic hypertension at all. The equipment that I use for this procedure is firstly a focusing light source, got a transilluminator head attached to an ophthalmoscope otoscope body here. You could use a pen torch but a focusing light source is definitely much better. The second piece of equipment is a lens and this is what's called a panretinal 2.2 diopter lens and this allows us to do a procedure called indirect ophthalmoscopy. To do this procedure we need to have a dark room and that means it either has to be a consulting room which has no windows or a room which has blackout blinds over the windows. If you don't have either of those things available to you, then you can still do an eye examination, but you probably will need to dilate the cat's pupils using eye drops such as tropicamide. To do this procedure, if you're right-handed like me, then you'll probably find it easiest to have the light source in your right hand, and once switched on, you hold that by your right eye, just above your right ear. And then in your left hand, you hold the lens, which is then going to be held just a centimetre in front of the cat's eye and the cat's head will be lifted slightly towards that lens. Once you then have that position set up, keeping at arm's length, you move your head and therefore the light source until you get a clear view of the back of the cat's eye. This is a very easy technique to master within really half an hour of first doing it, I would say. This is a typical picture that we would see in a cat suffering from systemic hypertension. There are a lot of abnormalities, many of which are actually very easy to sew. This is not difficult ophthalmology. The most obvious abnormality is visible on the right hand side of the picture where we can see there's a circular area in which everything is out of focus. And this is because of a serous retinal detachment which has lifted that retina off, taken it closer to the camera and all the vessels inside that area are therefore now out of focus. What we can see in this picture includes several areas of retinal hemorrhage, particularly on the left hand side of the picture, but also on the right hand side there's actually an aneurysm associated with a vessel at two o'clock. And this is just waiting to then cause retinal hemorrhage in that area. Much of the retina visible in this picture is actually blurred and out of focus and this is because of retinal edema and also detachment which is causing the structures to be closer to the camera and therefore out of focus. And in the centre of the image there also is an area of retinal degeneration which can be recognised as an area which is hyperreflective and this indicates previous damage which has occurred because with healing the retina actually becomes thinner and therefore more reflective.